started to speak today uh, about the pipeline. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, Mr. Larry Rogers, who has been mentioned a few times, but he's an effective landowner in the area, uh, followed by uh, Ms. Danielle Jordan, who is the president of the VSU Students Against Violating the Environment, or SAVE organization. And then lastly, again, Dr. Michael Knoll, um, who again is the president of WAVE, the Wiregrass Activist for Clean Energy. So let's begin with uh, Mr. Rogers. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to say it's an honor for me to be a part of this today. Um, I'd like to apologize in advance if I offend anybody. Uh, I'm just a country boy, and I say what's on my mind, and I say what I believe. And that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, this pipeline is going to run through about a mile and a half of my property. I've got 860 acres. <clears throat> it's going to come on a diagonal line from northwest to southeast, about a mile and a half of my property. Uh, it's going to cross through um, agricultural land, pasture land, uh, timber land. Uh, probably going to get about 10 300-year-old oak trees under a pond, right by two sinkholes that I have on my property within 500 feet. Uh, but these people say they're for the environment. Uh, I need to tell you briefly my experience with the Sable Trail from the beginning. From, from the first time I met the lady from Tampa, I don't remember her name, but I've been lied to, totally, since that time. The last correspondence that I had from them, I'm going to read for you, in part. This is a letter from Matthew Calvert, Esquire, Atlanta, Georgia, attorney, December the 4th, 2013, telling me that they had the right of state eminent domain and intended to come on my property and do whatever they needed to do. I didn't know anything to do but to go to my attorney, Bill Langdon. Uh, I have the letter that he sent him back, and I'm going to read part. Uh, in regard to the state law that he, he, he referred to in his letter, our review of the law suggests that one of these special procedures requires pipeline companies to obtain a certificate of public convenience and necessity pursuant to 22-3-82C prior to conducting the type of surveys you describe in your, in your request until such certificate is furnished and the notice requirements 22-3-82A are complied with, our client is unwilling to consider this request. Accordingly, any unauthorized entry by Sable Trail will be treated as trespass by our client and appropriate authorities will be contacted. Additionally, we, serious, we seriously question whether 22-3-88, which is your right of eminent domain statewide, allows for Sable Trail to exercise eminent domain rights upon the property, or any property in the state of Georgia for that matter, the code section would appear to require Sable Trail to actually furnish the natural gas in the state of Georgia as a condition of exercising eminent domain rights in Georgia. Uh, as Sable Trail's proposed use does not appear to furnish any natural gas to the state of Georgia, it is not authorized to exercise eminent domain rights pursuant to 22-3-88. Therefore, even if Sable Trail obtains and furnishes my client with a certificate of public convenience and necessity, it is our opinion, based on the information we have, that Sable Trail would have the right to exercise eminent domain, would not have, excuse me, would not have the right to exercise eminent domain. And any entry on our client's property would be an unauthorized entry. One reason you don't see very many people in here that are property owners today is they've been lied to. They think they've got to let them own their property because that's what they've been told. I know that for a fact. 
Um, we're fast becoming in this country like the country of Africa. I've got a very good friend here who came from Zimbabwe. And his family lost 75,000 acres over there. The government took it. They're going to start off taking mine, probably in this case, about 15 acres, probably. What hasn't been told, besides the 100 foot right of way they need, they're going to need another 400 feet of construction area. So they're going, to, they're going to demolish my trees in that area. Uh, I don't appreciate that. I really don't. Uh, I think if some of the folks here that have made statements had it happened to, to their property, I don't think you'd like it either. And I'm going to tell you, I don't like it. I, I'm not beating around the bush about it. I don't like it. And I'm going to fight it to the end. <clears throat> The next thing I want to address is the value of my property. I've done a lot of research. Uh, we've got an attorney in Atlanta that's a professional in this situation in recovering people's value for these kind of projects. There's one in Jacksonville for the state of Florida. He is the number one attorney down there. My uh, what I have learned in, in investigating this is I'm going to lose up to 50% of the value of my 860 acres. Now, you're talking about something I don't like? We're going to go to court. My attorney said we will send him in court, but we can't go till after it's over with. But he promised me we will collect. So, anybody that you know that's a property owner, pass the word to them. We can go collectively, and somebody's got to pay. Now, I don't know that we can ever get to the to the real owner of these. I don't know who the owner is. I don't know if it's uh, President Obama or uh, uh, some group out of Canada or somebody out of Russia. I don't know who it is. I don't think any of you know who it is. I think you'd be surprised to find out who it is. I was told, I had, I had a section of my property, I've got my property for sale. And I had a 150 acres of it sold. I understand that one of the county, and I made that statement at the last meeting we had when, when we met with FERC. I understand that one of the commissioners said that I was just lying about that. One of our local officials, county official, said I was lying about that. Well, I'll tell you what. When I go to court, he'll find out I wasn't lying because I'm going to prove it. Because it's a fact. But the guy's not interested anymore because he doesn't want to fight line on his property. And if you don't think it affects your value, you're sadly mistaken. They're proposing three feet of cover on this pipe. I've got, I do have a 10 inch line up like Mr. Slaughter said going on my property and that's why they want to come that way. They want me to have another line. I'll invite anybody that wants to go tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Come go with me. I want to show you something. My 10 inch line I've got, about 50 feet of it is exposed today. Exposed. You can't drive across it. I don't have a tractor that could drive across me. If you don't think this pipeline, if you don't think this cover is on the road, it might be three feet of cover somewhere, but it won't be everywhere. I've, I've talked to uh, just recently to a pilot who happens to be on this pipeline, and he flies for the current gas company that I have on my property now. And they came to him about going on his property. And they didn't know who he was. They, they, they thought it was, that he was somebody that they could lie to. And he asked him, he said, uh, do y'all ever have any leaks? Oh no, we, we, don't have any, we don't have any of that kind of, we do a good job, we don't ever have any leaks. And he said, let me just tell you something. He said, I fly for a gas line. Because they fly, them, I know every 30 days, maybe, maybe more often than that, but at least every 30 days. They know what to look for when there's a leak. And he said, I told that, I said, asked him what he told him. He said, I told him 
if he thinks they're not going to have a leak and there's not any leaks on his gas line, he's crazy because he sees them once a month. I'm telling you, these people will lie to you. They've lied to me. This letter that we responded to on December, that came on December the 4th, this is March the 29th. And Mr. Langdale asked him to respond to this letter. As of today, he hadn't responded yet. Because it's a lie. His, his letter he threatened me with was a lie. And that's what these people are. That's why you don't see this lady here today. The last thing I'm going to say, and I apologize in advance, I appreciate Mr. Slaughter's comments today. Uh, that's the first time I've heard him indicate that he had compassion for property owners. And I appreciate that. Uh, all of the commissioners that we have today in, in, in our county office don't feel that way. I hate to tell you that, but they don't. Uh, we've got some state representatives that apparently don't feel that way. One of them is my cross the fence neighbor at my farm. I hadn't heard a word from him, but he's running for state senator. I'm here to tell you that I'll never forget it. We don't have anybody on the state level that apparently cares about the property rights, people's property. Property owners, they don't care about us. And when it comes time to vote, everybody I can talk to, I'm going to talk just as hard as I can talk, locally and statewide. I apologize for that, but that's what I believe in, and that's what I'm going to do. I appreciate this on Kevin. Next panel presenter is Ms. Tripp, who is the president of BSU's Students Against Violating.